Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Inksan, I'm from IJS Electronics and today we're going to be uh, continuing the, from the previous video as you probably can see on the title, it says part 2 if you haven't seen the part 1 and if you do want to see part 1 do check out the playlist and it should be all in there for the part 1 part 1 was when we uploaded the uh, image into the HMI and all the process how that happened in part 2 we're going to discuss a bit more about settings within the CIVRX, which is a we integrated within our uh, HMI panel, and also we're going to be looking at of the actual wiring and uh, how to wire in your inputs and outputs, and how more or less demonstrate how they would work. So that that's what we're going to do today. Let's get cracking. <music> So when it comes down to setup and settings like that, uh, the, 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 the key ones you most likely most, most of the time you're going to be spending is in section 1 which is are your setup. In the setup uh, window you have a recalibration for a quick start, this is where you would do your calibration blah blah. Do check out, there's uh, Siemens already made some really cool videos, do check them out how this calibration process works in there. If you want to make me a video about it, do let me know in the description below, not description below in comment section below and I will do uh, I will make the video for it so uh, the ones we're going to be more or less have a look at it is the limits and as you can see down there my uh, my controllers already have the settings of this previous uh, project that I've been working on and by the way this is going to be part of one of the projects that I'm working on for our uh, automatic box taken away system so here's the limits there's a bit of a bummer when it comes down to, comes down to limits it's it's in percentages so uh, you whatever you are uh, setting your limits up you have to work out what percentage what weight that what the weight you're after is going to be what percentage of the actual uh, the, uh, your so weight you have set up your uh, load cell to be and to do that you do that in advanced uh, in advanced uh, scale parameters as you can see down there maximum weight is 10 kilos and minimum weight obviously is zero but it sort of uh, gives you an idea where to set these things up. So in this advanced scale parameters, you can change the name, you can change the weigh units, and you're going to indicate gross, or how gross is going to be, or a B or a G. And a resolution, so the resolution is really good, so you can sort of set up your own resolution, how you want the weights to be displayed, what sort of grammages, if you want like one gram to be displayed, or a five gram, or 10 gram, is you can do all that within resolution. And also you have automatic all about the zeroing options and then, then there's a uh, negative zeroing range and positive zeroing ranges and more parameters for the actual scales because as I said, Siemens has taught pretty much of everything not everything but most most stuff that you would need to set up your scale to the to the proper proper standards it's all in here so it's gonna, even when it comes down to low pass filters and things like that it's all there as well so that's that and don't forget if you change anything make sure you click the save so uh, let's get back to the limit so as you can see my 10 air kilo is right in here why do you need limits limits can activate things with ios with your with your outputs so you could set a uh, limit one output one and limit two output two or whatever else i can we can talk about that as well in in a minute so in here you have you you have a threshold on so basically my uh, uh my belt which i show in the end of the video it will come on at four kilos uh, with no delay, as soon as it receives 4 kilos, it will shoot on. And obviously the threshold I just set up and uh, just below 4 kilos. And I have a delay of 2 seconds. So we will have a delay. And you can do exactly the same for your limit too. So it gives you a good play what you can do within your limits. Because basically from the HMI alone with the basic controller, you can get some pretty cool automation already. So uh, so yeah, this is this is the where you can set up your limits. And then you have advanced, not down there, we've already been down there, and then you go into communications and interfaces. Uh, communication interfaces where you will find out your, uh, more or less stuff about your IOs. So uh, digital in, digital out, as you can see in here, you have four digital, uh, the, the digital inputs, and you also have four digital outputs. And as you can see in here, uh, each digital input has got a, a, a breakdown menu in here, so where you can select what you want that input to do so let's say you want zeroing oop to zero oh come on it's messing with me if you say you want to zero with some a button from somewhere other than uh, from the hmi 
So you can have that uh, signal coming from wherever you want that signal to come in and it will zero the scale for you with that input. And obviously do check out all the all, all the options that are available. Let's see, let's do display current uh, code, display gross protest, gross weight, net weight, display, trace RAM off, delete logs, all sorts of things. There's a load, so do check out and each input can be set up as well. And if you are using a, a PLC, 1200 series PLC, which is connected to it, you can still have access to these. Uh, IOs as well within the PLC program. So, uh, so I haven't done that, and then obviously, when it comes down to output, output the same, you click on it and it gives you all sorts of uh, options in here. What you can do, and uh, when each things are met, like conditions are met, and they will be executed within with, with, with the outputs you assign to it. So, in my case, I have signed limit one to the well. To my uh, once a limit and one is coming on, the output uh, zero will be coming on. So that's that. So and then you have analog outputs. You can set up your analog as well. And the cool thing is you can preset what start value, or what end value is within the kilos, and it will end. It will be outputting analog signal, and you have both options: zero to twenty volt, zero to twenty uh, milliamps. Oop and uh, four to twenty milliamps, and the source weight, net weight, and obviously. Here we go. So test force, there were, there's, there's uh, options in here. So do check them out as well. And also you start uh, status by error or stop. You can set them up as well in there. So again, if you change something, don't forget to click a uh, save. So from there on, we have a test and a force digital output. So let me just uh, test the force. Uh, test. It says in here, there's like a question mark in here. So if you click on it, it's a, you can it's, it more or less explain to you what it is and what it does. So to test force digital outputs, the function of the corresponding output needs to be set to test or force output. I'm not sure what that is. I'll let you guys to figure that out. But you can see in here, if I push down my a, a load cell, as you can see, my limit one kicked on, and you can see if the input uh, or is the output being on or not. So, uh, and um, same goes to your analog as well. So you can uh, have a look at it, what is going on in here for the uh, test and force. I don't think you can force, but you can definitely have a look what's going on. So, and then you have uh, RS-45 settings in here. So, uh, so you can see there's options. Look at that, you can, uh, Interesting. Look, look at these options. Metal Toledo stuff can be communicated with you. Interesting. So yeah, and so board rate and event and blah blah blah. It's basically to do with the mod bus. So uh, and from there on, you still have test and trace, Ethernet settings, as you can see. So what happens if? So you can see your MAC address and your IP address. In some occasions, I think in some of the, I think on the basic screen, I was able to change this, but on this one, I can't. I'm not sure. So yeah, so uh, then you have semantic interface in here. Not sure what that's used for, and a uh, uh, load cell inputs. Oh, DB settings. What is this? All right, so you can do something here. So if I do that, load cell input on. I am not sure what that does. So I'll keep it off, let you guys to work it out. I'll probably. All right, look at that. So you can set up your load cell in here. I think I'm, I'm going that far, yeah, because I never really needed it. But here we go. So that's, that's pretty much that a lot in here. So uh, communications and interface, we've done that one already, recovery and reset. So uh, that is, I think that is to create a recovery point, loads of recovery points and things it's to do with the f uh, settings and things like that. Yeah, you can load standard scale parameters. Yeah, load factory settings. Yeah, yeah. So you can create your recovery point if you want. And uh, yeah, and that's, that's pretty much it. And then obviously there's your password. You can create the passwords in here. 
and in the in diagnostics you can read all your messages if there is if there is if there is any module info as it gives you all the information about and the good thing is he's got a support line I'm not sure that support line works so uh, I don't know if that works or not and also you can have any their email address here we go so you got that one here as well so uh, increase the solution I don't want to do that oh how do we go back how do we go back set up no I've been there already uh, what did I diagnostics? Uh, start trace, start trace. I'm not. I've never used this window again, guys. Try, guys, check it out. But there's that window option is right in there, and then it's a trend. I believe if I start playing around, you can see what is going on. Yeah, you can see the fluctuation of your load cell. Pretty cool. I like that. So uh, scale status. Oh, here we go. You can see all the status calibrated. Service and oh, look at the, all the statuses in here. Nice. There you go. You can check that as well out. And that will do for this guy. So this is the actual HMI screen. So let's jump on and check out the wiring of actual uh, inputs and outputs as well. As you can see, my controller is still connected to my S two hundred series PLC. But this cable in here, this one. Let me just zoom out a little bit. So this cable in here, this one is uh, going straight to my HMI and as you can see this cable in here is going actually to this HMI which I need to uh, start up. So, so you can use another HMI if you want to for your main PLC and still have separate uh, separate window for communicating with your uh, scale and your HMI for the scales. So yeah, you have both options. Again, again uh, this is uh, still connected to the uh, to the actual uh, uh, 200 series PLC. I don't have to do that. I just I just left it anyway. So uh, so we so yeah, if, I, if you don't want to, you don't have to have it. So when it comes down to the wiring, so let me unplug that. So your analogs, yeah, your analog is going to be, where is it? It's right, as you can see, I, a, zero AQ, AQ plus and AQ minus. This is going to be outputting right here at the bottom. So you got one, two, so we got one, two, three, and four. These two guys right here will be outputting your uh, milliamps. So and when it comes down to inputs and outputs, so let me zoom a little bit closer. Move it a little bit like that so you can see it. So uh, you, you have digital input 0, 1, 2 and 3 and you have a 2M in here. Whatever the power supply you're going to be using for your inputs, do make sure that the minus of that power supply comes to 2M and uh, plus goes to your switches or whatever is, whatever is going to be sending a signal back to uh, this, uh, these inputs. They come back to a uh, inputs in here, the plus sign. A minus, uh, I mean, no, the, the digital outputs, uh, digital outputs are transistor outputs, so they, they need to be powered. So 3L plus and 3M. So uh, these two guys in here, this is your power source from the power supply you're going to be using to activate your uh, output. So plus and a minus. And as the output will come on, it will output 24 volt uh, a signal. Uh, and uh, what ampage, maximum ampage you can do, uh, do check out the manual. It should give you that information on there. So just to demonstrate to you what I am planning for my a future project. So let me zoom this out a little bit so we can see it a bit better. So uh, as you can see in here, I will push onto my load cell. It will reach the limit of four kilos and it will activate the scale. After I a belt, there you go. The belt runs for a certain, because uh, because it already went, because remember I set up like a delay of two and a half seconds. So even though the weight went down straight away, the delay was delaying for the actual belt to stop. But that gives you more or less the idea what can you do with this setup. And that, ladies and gentlemen, will do for CVRX WP231. And we'll be checking out all the uh, 1500 series and possibly 300 series and uh, ET200 SP uh, PLCs, away cells, away, away, away modules in the future as well. So hopefully this is giving you good ideas, uh, helping you out. So and you enjoy the video. So uh, yeah, any questions do leave them in the comment section below. I'll answer them as soon and as accurate as I can. Other than that, ladies and gentlemen, 
Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video if you like and if you obviously support the channel. And yeah, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next video.